Okay, this effect really does need a spectator for it to work correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just show you how the effect is done and then encourage you to try it out on a spectator, okay? So what you tell the spectator to do is choose four random red cards and four random black cards, okay? And they can be anything, okay? So maybe they choose uh, these four red cards here and maybe these four um, black cards, okay? And then we also need a special red card and a special black card that they can remember, okay? So hopefully they'll choose something that, you know, they can remember easily. I suppose a good choice for black might be Ace of Spades, since it's such a popular card. <laughs> and I guess you could even choose Queen of Hearts for the special red card. That's an easy one to remember, okay? So you need four random red cards, four random black cards, and then a special red card and a special black card, okay? So how this will work, now you won't, now technically you as the performer, you don't see these, okay? So they just hand you four red, four black, you just randomly stack them without looking at them. You don't see these either, as the performer, just the spectator does. So right now, you as the performer know nothing. <laughs> okay, so this is what you need to do as the performer. Once you have the four red cards on top, followed by four black cards on bottom, or vice versa, the order of those sets of four actually doesn't matter. Okay, so this is what you need to do. I'm gonna slide these off so I have enough room. You take these cards, and you perform what's called a triangle deal, okay? So you start dealing right here, and then you just deal in a clockwise direction. Now, since we started dealing there, that's the first one to pick up, and then you go in counterclockwise. You go in the opposite direction, okay? So this is the special packet that we're going to be working with, okay? Now what you do is you ask the spectator and it has to be done without you seeing the colors of either one of these cards or these, actually, okay? So what you ask them to do is you can kind of hold the cards towards them so they can see. Now, you know, since, <laughs> since I don't have a spectator, we're going to have to look at these together. But what you're going to ask them to do is identify any red card here and replace it by their special black card, okay? Now, secretly, their black card is the Ace of Spades. You don't know that as the performer, okay? So you kind of hold them up like this, right? And then the spectator, and the spectator won't show you that that's <laughs> Ace of Spades. And so maybe they'll identify this red King of Hearts as the one they're going to replace with the ace of spades and you just have them put it exactly where they took the previous card from similarly for their special red card they just need to identify any of the black cards here except the one they just placed right and pull it out so maybe in fact maybe we'll they'll just choose this one right here so they pull that one out, set it down. So as far as you know, as the performer, you know nothing about the colors of any of these. And then they just insert it back where they took it from, just like that. Do you see that? Okay. And then they just hand the packet to you. Okay. And then we can set these cards off to the side. Actually, in some ways, we don't need them anymore. Okay. So where we are right now is... There are eight cards here, none of which the performer knows anything about the cards, their suits, their values, or their order. Spectator may remember kind of where things are, which is fine, okay? But you as the performer know nothing. That's what's key, okay? So you as the performer take the cards, and then you're going to give the spectator the opportunity to just randomize these cards thoroughly, Okay, so the first thing you're going to ask them to do is tell them you're going to perform a left-right shuffle and then ask them to decide, okay, should we stack right on left or left on right? It's a free choice. So maybe they stack left on right, okay, 
and then you ask them, would you like to do another one of those? And maybe they'll say, yes, do another one. That's fine. What about now? Left on right again? Would you like to do a third? You would. Okay, that's fine. You can do... Now, speaking to you as the performer, I'm telling you that you can do as many of these as the spectator calls for, and it won't undermine anything that we will accomplish. So it really is a free choice to do this shuffle as many times as they like. Maybe this time they'll want right on left. And that's just fine. Okay. Now another shuffling procedure that you can offer them is something called the Klondike shuffle. Now it's not mandatory, but if you'd like to, you can. This is where you take the top and bottom card off as one. Top and bottom off is one. Top and bottom off is one. And then the last two go on top. Now the spectator can decide to have you do that shuffle once or seven times. It won't matter. So maybe they'll ask for it a second time and that's it and that's fine. So here it is, top and bottom off is one at each stage and then the last two go on top, okay? Now the third mixing procedure, which actually does a very good job scrambling any packet of cards, it's called the Australian Down Under. Okay, so how this works is the top card goes down, next one goes under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, last one goes on top. Now you can ask the spectator, would you like me to do any more of those? Or are you satisfied that the cards are really just beyond the knowledge of anyone, including the spectator, right? The cards have been moved around enough. I am certain they have no idea where anything is. Okay, so if they ask for you to do more of these down under shuffles, you can do as many as they ask for. Okay, so let's say they say they're content. They're satisfied that no one could know anything about these cards. Then you would say, okay, very good. And then you'd pick up the cards. And now what you're going to do is that same identical triangle deal that we did at the beginning, the same deal. We're not doing anything differently. Okay, so you deal out starting here clockwise until you deal out all the cards. Do you remember which one we pick up first? Yes, it's the first one that we dealt to. So you pick up this one and then you stack in counterclockwise, opposite direction. Okay, so we're almost done at this point. So what you can tell the spectator is, you know, just recount everything. Just remind them that they chose four random red cards, four random black cards, a special red card and a special black card. None of these cards were shown to you as the performer. There is no way you could know anything about these cards or which ones were chosen as special cards or not and so forth, okay? And even the order, you really should know nothing about that as the performer, okay? So remind them of that, okay? And so what you do is you just set out um, the bottom four, the top four into separate piles. And then once you've reminded them of all of these facts regarding the impossibility of you knowing anything about this packet, just explain to them that, well, for whatever reason, this dealing that we've done into a triangle, it just seems to have this inexplicable ability to put the cards into a certain state where the cards communicate to the world what special red card you chose and what special black card you chose, okay? And it's for the simple reason that those special cards will just stand out as sore thumbs. It's like they just stand out in any crowd in which they find themselves, okay? So we'll go ahead and reveal what's in each set of four. And I'm here to tell you that it will probably be clear what your special red and black cards were. Okay, so let's just see. What am I talking about here? Oh boy, okay, let's see. Do you see anything that kind of sticks out as different? Anything unusual? Okay. Um, let's look over here. Anything strange here? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here that your special card was the Queen of Hearts. Is that true? 
And the spectator will say, yeah, how in the world did this work out like this? And then you can say, and I'm equally certain that your special black card was the ace of spades, okay? Can you see how easy the cards have made it for me to detect your special cards, okay? And the spectator at this point is probably going to scratch their head and try to rewind reality, rewind the routine and think, okay, now what? How, how, what, how is this possible? I mean, he didn't see any of the cards. I switched a red for a black and a black for a red. Uh, we mixed the cards thoroughly. I saw him mix them and he asked me how many times to do things and how to stack things. And he did exactly what I requested. How is it possible that the cards at this point could communicate so clearly what my special red card was, Queen of Hearts, and my special black card was Ace of Spades. Okay, now since when you go to perform this, you'll have a spectator, you'll truly see how miraculous this effect is, okay? Because you won't see any of the cards, as I mentioned, and it will turn out just as it has for me here, okay? And it's an effect that really has no explanation in the minds of 99.9% .9 of spectators out there, okay? Now, as a little secret, and I will add some links in the description below, but this effect is based on Bessie sequences of order eight. So that is what we're taking advantage of. That is the underlying structure that allows these cards to be mixed so thoroughly and in so many different ways. And in fact, in so many more ways than I've shown you here, we just use three shuffles. There's actually hundreds of ways of mixing this packet of eight and not undermine the finale of this effect. It will finish in a similar way to what we see here. Okay, so if you want to learn more about Bessie sequences of order eight, take a look at the series that I'll link down below and try this out. I mean, try this will work for you. Now you'll need to rewind and remind yourself of a couple of the nuances of the steps involved, but this will work for you and it will make you look like an absolute card wizard. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.